Live Theatre UK is delighted to be here on stage at the Charing Cross Theatre. On this beautiful set. With Linda Marlowe, who is something of a theatrical legend, I would say. You've had such a long and a successful career. Certainly I long. I <laughs> <laughs> if I said Linda Marlowe is appearing in the bar of a Tokyo hotel, it almost sounds like you've changed careers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's true, because on the poster it says Linda Marlowe in the bar of a Tokyo hotel. So, meaning I'm in the, in the play, but using the inn, the same inn. So, for those rather people. Than in, in the <laughs> yes, so you are in the bar of the Tokyo hotel, but it's actually a play by Tennessee Williams. It certainly is. And uh, my editor tells me that you are quite sensational, which is no surprise to people who've seen your well, acting in the past. I was very moved when I read what he said. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, tell me, why, moved. why do you think this play is not done so often? I think, uh, I mean, it's so sad to really to even say it this. I think the reason it hasn't been done is because in 1969, when he wrote it, they didn't really understand it, the, the style in which he wrote it because, mm. of course, he was so famous to writing all these amazing long saga plays which were done in a sort of kind of pretty normal way of talking, mm. but brilliant, of course, like Streetcar and um, Glass Menagerie yep. and Cat on Top and all of them. Wonderful. But then he decided to make a departure, as artists do. Do, as and they, they go want in, to and, do. And they want to do, and they want to go into different periods and try different things, like abstract, or, mm. you know, or, or all the famous artists have done mm. that. So he decided that he would want to do, do that with this play. So it's sort of fractured dialogue. There's a lot of um, broken sentences, which is hell to learn. Mm. But it is a way of, it, it's, a, it's a sort of a, it's, a, it's an abstract, it's got all the, the wonderful poetry that, that Tennessee Williams has, and I have some soliloquy monologues where they become really poetic in there, you know, about women growing old, and, and it, you know, in the sort of true Tennessee Williams, he writes so brilliantly yes. for women, and it is just an amazing part to play. Mm. But the rest of it is sort of, we, we don't finish each other, we, we, don't, we don't even overlap at times. We, we, the, fe the sentence is left in the air with on the, or instead of or defense that against must be really hard to well it's, learn. Ve it's very hard to learn because you have to know you know sometimes i have the same the same cue coming up two or three times so i almost have to know it in order mm. but it's it's a sort of a i think i I've, i haven't really read that much about this part of it but he he worked in japan he went and did some course there and he was taught about the haiku and the yes. sort of short unfinished is, poems and yeah. I think he decided to bring that and I think it's I read it 11 years ago I was in New York doing one of my solo shows which was a compilation of um, Tennessee Williams a short unknown well lesser known short stories that a great friend of mine who wrote another show for me put into a solo show and I I saw this book of short shorter plays in in the bookshop there and this one I jumped just out. Was, well, jumped out and of course it, the book included that one by saying in a bag of Tokyo Hotel and other plays yeah. and I made up my mind that one day I had to play that I was part. going to say I just <laughs> thought it was amazing and this is it and 11 years later unbeknownst to me I was offered it Here by by lovely Robert who I didn't know at the time mm -hmm. and who's done directed it brilliantly and mm. Um, I, I love the play. I love its fractured thing, but it doesn't go sit down. Even now, I've noticed slightly with the critics, not everybody, no. but it doesn't sit well still. Yeah. They still feel that it's an uneasy so it's way of, of it. Not that the play or, what, or the contents is, but, an easy, but it's structure. an uneasy a structure. Yeah. In fact, there was one review, which I can't even remember who it was but they must have been complete idiots I think <laughs> said oh, the actors uh, leave these terrible pauses <laughs> and they don't they've got these and they, they they've got broken lines and they can't even they can't even get it together to overlap it maybe the whole point is you're not meant to overlap it's got a full stop there <laughs> it would be ter you, it would be wrong if you overlapped no, we it we'll forget about them we'll forget about them I know forget about them tell me. A cretin <laughs> tell me I believe that you were born in Australia I certainly was I what the brought first you to the UK well, my parents brought me actually on a boat, okay. <laughs> but they were they were originally English. But yes. my mother was brought up in Fiji and in New Zealand, and okay. my father was also brought up in New Zealand. And they and they met there, and they were both actors. And they, but there was no professional theatre in New Zealand at that time in no. the 30s, so they, they moved to Australia where I was born. So they were there for 13 years, and I was there for 10. I spent the first 10 years of my life in Sydney, and then they he went Peter Finch. The, the Oliviers yes. discovered Peter Finch, and Peter Finch was one of my father's best friends, and they did a lot of plays together in the theatre there. So that and when he went, and he just suddenly thought, I think I want to go and have a go in, in London. So, And I was thrilled, because I, well, he'd always talked about England, and I thought, I want to be there, I want to be there. So, you know, when they there discussed going, I, I sort of encouraged them to keep on with the discussion. 
and there, so I've lived in England ever since. So you, yes, I was born in Australia. You, you have had a, a very long and successful career, as I said before. You've done film, you've done theatre, you've done everything. Yes, sometimes all at the same time. <laughs> well, when jobs getting, overlap. Well, yes, this one. Yeah. I've got four episodes to do of EastEnders, <laughs> starting from next week, I was while I'm doing this. <laughs> right, well, that just makes life easier. I oh, interesting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say was a lot of people would know you at, 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 as EastEnders, and to look down your biography And that's only is, very recently, of course. Well, yes, you of know. course. Yeah. But um, it's, it's a long biography to read, and, and very yeah. impressive. What, what, is, what is something you're most proud of, that you look back and think, wow, that, that was a turning point for me? Well, I've had a lot of turning points, and they've all been, I've been proud of all of them. I think I've always had a rather maverick career. I mean, one of my biggest and most forming turning points was after being 10 years and I well my biggest turning point was becoming an actress at all because I trained to be a ballerina and go. that's what I wanted to do and I, I think was rather disappointed I wasn't going to be good enough but I so. think that probably works very well for you because I think the physicalization of the, the ballet training yeah. probably I think it has yeah. helped and certainly in the kind of theater that I've done the physical theater then yeah. I had 10 years of making some sort of B movies films yeah. although I was in a couple of um not B movies as yes. well, and, and a lot of television, and but the theatre seemed really dull that I was doing, and then I I thought I want to do physical theatre, and there really wasn't happening in this country, and mm. then somebody said you should meet Stephen Burkoff, so I met Stephen Burkoff, he and hired me, and you were off, and and that was another big turning point mm. because that put me into a well for me, over a period of not constantly, but over a period of 20 years I worked with him. Mm. So therefore there was a huge body of work that I did with him and mm. which informed a lot of the work that I did and then followed it on with Richard Jones who's another wonderful expressionistic director. So those are turning points that definitely stopped me from having a commercial career mm. but gave me a really interesting career. And then another turning point as I reached 60, which is a long time ago now, um, I decided that maybe there weren't parts for women, I, although I was getting the work, but mm. I was just was worried. So I decided to do a solo show and then did seven solo shows and went round the world with them. And that the power, I could eat you alive and blow you out in bubbles. I devour stuff like you. Yeah. That should do you happen. like the one woman show? I love doing the one yeah. woman shows. I mean, that's, I ha yeah. That requires a, a whole different discipline, I would It imagine. certainly does, and it was yeah. very, very scary. Well, it is scary, but I'm, I, mean, I find acting scary anyway on stage. <laughs> I mean, I really do. It terrifies me. <laughs> so what do you have to say? That? I know. Well, it's oh, always what? that thing you're going to go blank and you're not going to remember the lines. It's the biggest we're fear of all. We're here actors. on the set. I feel like we should be ordering a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We have a this lovely Japanese bar. barman. Yes, this is the bar. This is the bar. Uh, which leads me to the question, what is it then about acting that has kept you interested and driven because you've Well, been I think so because long. of the variety of the mm. kind of work that I've done. I mean, you know, actually, I don't, apart from my peers and people who are within the profession, I don't think any Joe Public don't know who I am at all, and yet I've been acting for 54 <laughs> years. They do now that I've done EastEnders. They stop me in the street Isn't now, which funny? is ironic. Isn't that funny? But I... But I it's think, sort of good in a way. Yes, because I think that's what's kept me interested and kept me wanting to do things. Because yeah. I like the kind, I like the fact. I don't regret one little bit that I turned my back on a sort of quite a commercial television career when I was young, mm -hmm. Dolly Bird, mm -hmm. and decided that you know I wanted to do all these different kinds of things. I've even learned to be a trapeze artist as well. So I've got you know, and I had a rock group in the 70s, a pre-punk rock group. So you know, <laughs> I wanted to try as many different forms of and entertainment. You, and you did. Yes, I did, mm -hmm. and I hopefully will still will. Mm -hmm. Till I drop down. Dead. So now you're here at the Charing Cross Theatre. I yes. have to say, this set, yeah. and it, it seems to inhabit the theatre beautifully. Beautifully. And lovely like it, design. And it makes it not seem such a, because it's, it's no. a beautiful theatre, but it's quite a long tunnel. But with this with this rake and the raised set, it brings it, you closer to yeah, the back. Absolutely. It's very clever that, yeah. that how it's done there. There's a whole different atmosphere in You're here. about to get ready for the show. We're just, I am. Just prior to the performance, they were actually doing the checks in the lighting and everything yes. a moment yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any ritual, routine? Oh, God, yes. I have to check my own props because, yes. you know, if, if things Go around, wrong. make sure. Yes, well, the handbag will be set here for mm -hmm. me by Paul, who you spoke to. Hmm. And it's I also do a warm-up every, you a know, warm -up, physical. A warm-up, like a vocal, physical. And physical, yeah, yeah. yeah. feel like yeah, you get in actually, the, yeah. yeah. Tell me, you've got a, an interesting voice and accent and the whole thing happening in this. It's n not like you. Well, in the play, yes, yes. I'm playing at New York, how do, New how York do you, American. How, how do you work on that? You know, well, do you get to I've a point worked, where you I've think... I've played American parts before, okay. and I did some more. I went and did another little course just before I did this to sort of brush up, and I've been listening to Jane Fonda, too, because her accent is, is right the on. kind of accent that I was actually... I was told by the producer, Stephen Levy, that I, that I was doing uh, to listen to her, because that's, that's what I was doing. So I did listen to her, and I thought... 
Funnily enough, my agent said, you just reminded me of Jane Fonda. I said, that's good, because I've been watching her <laughs> and oh, that's listening good. to her. There you go. Well, look, so I work on the accents, obviously. Congratulations on your performance. Well, and, thank uh, you. And all the very best for the rest of the season. You're, you've started recently. We've got some few more weeks left. Yes, we do, and, for um, four and a half weeks. Yeah. Get into the Charing Cross Theatre and see this marvellous woman in this wonderful play. <laughs> thank you so much. Mm -hmm.